Okay, in my last video, I promised in this video that I would have a giveaway, and I'm gonna give away this five frame nuke that I made on the, my last video. That's it's nice. Yeah, it's really worked out really well. I really wanna keep it. Yeah, the other day I was going through a cooking forum, and they were talking about how different foods are processed. You know, everything from pickles to cereal and those kinds of things. It's and pretty gross. How, it? Some of it was really, it's really, really gross. gross, what they were talking about, how bugs get in there and what they those allow. kind of things. Yeah. And then somebody brought up how they don't like how honeybees process oh. honey, how it's made. And I, I thought about that for the longest time, and I thought, you know what? Maybe it's time for us to talk about some of the misconceptions that people have about honeybees, some of the lies that are out there that they believe, a and ton. maybe correct yeah. some of those. I think we should. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's actually pick the top 10. Okay, all right. Well, I know the top one. You know okay. what the top one is going to be? I want to see if you if you think the top one is the same one that I think it is. I know what it is. What I, is I it? get asked all the time, bees are going extinct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bees, the bees are, are leaving the planet. Yeah, exactly. ah. And do you know that bees have never, honeybees that is, right. honeybees. have never gone extinct, have never gone close to being nope. extinct, have never been on the extinction list. That's right. Ever. Never been on the endangered species list. And in fact, I think I read recently where they're actually going up in numbers. Oh yeah. It, it said right now yeah. in, in the world that honeybees are at the highest <laughs> level yeah. that they have ever been, yeah. you know, ever. Some people say, well, so. how can that be? Bees are dying. I hear every winter that 50% of bees are dying. Well, and they still do. I think they still they do around still 30 do. or 40 yeah. percent, something like that. They still die in the winter. But, but my still. answer to that is we've become really better. I mm -hmm. want to say aggressive at mm -hmm. keeping bees alive mm -hmm. and reproducing bees every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've gotten Split, really good right. at that. Splitting yeah. them and making more yeah. and more colonies. So that's one misconception. Yeah. Number one, bees are, are not, not going, going extinct. extinct. Nope. But along with that, I think a lot of people also don't understand that honeybees were never native to the United States to begin with. Yeah. I think a lot of people know that, but maybe they don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. They were brought over. Right. They were brought over in, I think, the 17th century yeah. uh, by European settlers. And one of the reasons that we had to bring honeybees over was... We brought other things that weren't native to America like, over. Like Apple citrus. Trees. <laughs> yeah, like citrus fruits and those kinds of trees. Right. So we had to have honeybees to pollinate them. Mm -hmm. So bees have not been here since the beginning of time. I think there have been some kinds of native pollinators mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. have always been, you know, probably in the area, but not honeybees. So let's get back to what I was talking about at the beginning. Oh, yeah. You know, when somebody said, oh, they, I can't stand the way the bees make honey and, you know, because it's bee vomit. Mm. Is honey really bee vomit? The third lie is, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, so how do they make it? Yeah, a lot, I think a lot of people think uh, it's kind of gross because bees go out, they gather nectar, they bring mm -hmm. it into their honey crop, and then they, they use the word regurgitate it back in the hive to other bees that then put it into a cell. So honey is regurgitated, you know, bee nectar or flower nectar. But you have to realize that the human digestive system is entirely different than the honeybee. And to call the nectar that's in a honey crop vomit and compared to human anatomy is not true at all. Mm -mm. It's a very clean, a very it's filled. It's sterile. It's very, yeah, filled with antibiotics. Tank, a tank, it's a sterile tank. It, absolutely. It's, it's a very mm -hmm. clean mm -hmm. honey tank. It doesn't come in contact with their uh, other stomach that they have that where more digestive things happen. So in that honey crop, that honey tank, very clean. It's mm -hmm. not vomit. Mm -hmm. And no. they don't really regurgitate it. I mean, we've Not seen really, we've no. seen people throw up. We, you know, we raised six kids, and we've we've watched a <laughs> lot of vomit going on in our house. No, but it's not a regurgitation. It's like don't they move their muscles in a way that just kind of that's right brings it, it up out yeah. of the tank, I, out I, of the honey tank. Yeah, one way I like mm -hmm. to to think about it is uh, human vomit is involuntary for the most part. You know, like oh, I don't feel good. Then mm -hmm. you throw up mm -hmm. involuntarily because mm -hmm. your system is wanting to get rid of those things in you. The honeybee is purposeful. It's it's more mm -hmm. of a voluntary a way of expressing back out the nectar that they simply carried in their honey crop back into the hive. So totally different. Not bee vomit at all. Right, right. Not bee vomit. Get that out of your mind. Uh, some people also say it's bee spit. Oh. And it, it's not bee spit. Hmm. 
Yeah. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, well, good. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting the way people think that. I know. All right, so here's another one. We were talking the other day. We saw, we were talking about this article where it said in a, in a tropical climate that there are flowers sometimes that don't come out and bloom until midnight. Mm -hmm. So how in the world are these um, types of flowers getting... Um, pollinated. And so someone brought up the fact, they said, well, you know, bees, honeybees must come out at night to do pollination. And the fact is that bees do not come out at night except for one reason. <laughs> <laughs> for one reason? For, they come out at night. To chase a bear away. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, they, yeah, they might come out, you know, if you, if you have insectivores or something like that that's bothering them, keeping yeah. them up at night, you know, they're going to come out and they're going to attack. But if you leave a light on, oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, that's so <laughs> they're true. They're going to come out, and so they true. they will go right to that yep. light, and they will stay there, and they will buzz at that mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Or um, we have um, a lot of our what we call our YouTube hives. We have hives everywhere. I don't yeah. know that people realize that, but we have them in several different yards. But the ones that you do just for your YouTube videos. We keep really close right here to the building, mm -hmm. you know, so that you can access them really easily when you videotape. Yeah. So you're right. not taking them all out to the other bee yards that we have. Yeah. But unfortunately, David, you will tend to leave the lights on. Oh, I do. On the porch. I have to. Security <laughs> reasons. I have to leave security lights on. And yeah, there are always a few dead bees on the porch underneath those lights. Uh -huh. It's funny. I get that question asked a lot. People will tell me... David, something's wrong with my hive. Every morning when I go out to the porch, there's this dead bees, bees on my all porch. Over the porch dead. Why are they right. doing that? Well, right. they're attracted to the light. Right. And then right. they just get out there and they just keep banging their head against the light until they can't right. take it anymore. And so sometimes at night here, too, we have people that come in and out and in and out of um, our training facility in the workshop that we have. We mm -hmm. have people that, you know, come and go all the time and might leave a door open. Mm. And the bees will actually at night actually come in oh, yeah. to the the uh, workshop area and oh, go yeah. right for the lights. Yep. And the funny thing is, if you turn off those lights, do you know what honeybees do? They go to the light. Well, if you, <laughs> if you turn off the light. Oh, every light in there. They probably just stand still on a wall or a ceiling. They somewhere. don't. They go plop and they fall right down. And they did this at, oh. a, at a university. I don't know if they got paid to do this. Oh, sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> they got a big government grant but worth they, millions they had of dollars. A, they, they had a grant, I think, to, to see what do bees do when you turn off the lights. Yeah. And they just go plop and they just hit the ground when you turn off the I'll lights. Oh, to do an experiment. See, yeah. that's true. Now they can crawl around at night. Yeah. But yeah. they will, if they're on lights like that. Well, I was thinking like off. every time we have, you know, bees in these buildings we turn all the lights off and open a door right and then they and all then fly they out. go yeah, yeah. Then so they go if out. there's any light source at all yeah you know, that just uh, that just go to that light. <laughs> right but that's interesting right. if you turn all the lights off they just kind of go to the ground right. yeah mm. they do but yeah. you know back to those flowers in the tropics that pollen, yeah. that open up around midnight those sort of things there are some bees that have evolved over time mm -hmm. to actually be able to fly by moonlight. I've heard that. To be I able know. to pollinate those flowers, yeah. but not around here. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah, right. Uh, I, I guess bees could go out on a bright moon night if they mm. were really wanting to get nectar, but that's just not how honeybees mm. operate. Mm -mm. No, it's there not, are some bugs yeah. that do that. There are there some There are some. Yeah, there are many. Uh, yep. You know, they're not that. Yep. And, and, you know, bees have to use light to navigate. They mm -hmm. use the sun, right, to mm -hmm. navigate directions mm -hmm. and all. If the sun's mm -hmm. not up, mm -hmm. I can't see how that would be productive. But I have seen times, uh, even before the sun is up, if I've left some honey somewhere for the bees to get, the bees are out there getting that honey from maybe cleaning out a super or something, maybe half an hour to an hour before sunrise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's bright enough right. and they know where to go mm -hmm. to get that. Mm -hmm. They don't have to use the sun. They're just mm -hmm. making a quick trip mm -hmm. to the honey super. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So now this isn't a misconception, but tell us what, do, what does happen to bees if they get caught outside and they're like, oh, I didn't realize that yeah, it you happens. Know, it, sunset oh, yeah. was coming in 15 minutes and I'm mm -hmm. two miles away. What do mm -hmm. they do? They go to the nearest bee hotel and check in. <laughs> they do. They just pick a flower. They pick a place to oh, rest. And they I just see. hang out. They hang out and wait. Yeah. I would imagine that's dangerous in the, in the well, summertime. Sure. <laughs> sure. Although there's not, you know, not a lot of birds. There's not a lot of, a lot of predators mm. preying on bees at night. So a lot of them, you know, some of them get trapped mm. in pumpkin blossoms when they close. 
and they spend really? the whole night there. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had and no so, idea. Uh, I've had bees that will come home. They've been trapped, and as soon as it gets daylight, uh, sometimes they're trapped in a storm. starts raining, yeah. so they, they yeah. land in some brush mm-hmm. or something until the mm-hmm. rain stops, and they pick mm-hmm. up the next day. Wow. Yeah. All right, we have six more misconceptions people hold about bees. But before we get into the other six, I want to encourage you to please subscribe. Bobblehead David here holding the sign. Please subscribe. We appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up and click on the bell to be notified each time we make a new video. Now, here's something that people say that bees hibernate in the wintertime. Oh, yeah. A lot of people say that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that bees are like bears. They eat a bunch of stuff. They just kind of hunker down for the winter and, uh, you know, don't do anything. But that's not true at all. What do they do? Well, they stay very active trying to keep their hive very warm and so they will still cluster it's called and that means they cl- they stay close together and they keep each other warm uh kind of like what me and you do all winter long we cluster <laughs> in our house we don't hibernate but we cluster <laughs> here in we illinois we cluster to stay warm <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we get up and move over to the honey frame and open the honey frame up the refrigerator and get some food out and then we go back and cluster on the couch watch netflix so bees are a lot like us yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) that that is interesting one of the things that people think sometimes is that if they get stung by a honeybee and then they end up with a you know redness or some swelling that they're allergic to the bees right so are they? Well, you, how do you say that, right? So sure, uh, anyone can say I got stung by a honeybee and I turned red and I swelled up, so I'm allergic. Mm-hmm. But are they referring to an anaphylactic mm-hmm. shock? Mm-hmm. That's the difference. So and that's what an allergy is. Yeah, it's an anaphylactic it, shock. It, it really is. Mm-hmm. Now I I want to say this. Like um, let's say that you got a hammer and you hit me right here on the forehead and it made a big red mark <laughs> and I swelled up really big. I'm Should not we try a, it? Yeah. You want us to try? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allergic to hammers. No, no, you're not allergic to I hammers. I had a reaction, a reaction. To, the, mm-hmm. to the hammer, mm-hmm. so I turned red mm-hmm. and I swelled up. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't an allergy. It wasn't mm-hmm. an allergic reaction. Yeah, you're always going to have a reaction yes. anytime you get stung. That's right. You're going to have a reaction. A mosquito, you have a reaction right. to a mosquito. Right. So, right. Um, but anaphylactic shock is more when it gets systemic and it starts affecting other vital organs. Right. Can't breathe, right. blood Tongue pressure. Swells. Yeah, all mm-hmm. this stuff Pass goes out. crazy but a lot mm-hmm. of people say i'll ask them i'll say let's define what do you mean you're you're allergic to honeybees and they'll say well i got red and i swelled up really my hand got really big that's pretty much if you get mm-hmm. bit by a spider mm-hmm. you know certain types of other insects mm-hmm. right wasps mm-hmm. i mean just goes right. on the list but along with that though it used to be um it, it, it used to be that we would say well go ahead and get stung once and then you'll see if you're allergic Mm -mm. and then you'll know you're okay if you don't have any kind of a reaction to it. But we know that's no longer true. No, that's not true. No. In fact, some people don't even have an anaphylactic shock their first bee sting, but Mm -hmm. they could have it on the second bee Mm -hmm. sting. You can actually develop an anaphylactic shock at At any any time. time. Mm -hmm. So none of us are really safe, right? I could be out there working uh, next spring and Mm -hmm. have a a problem. So Mm -hmm. it's always uh, important to be precautious. And, right. So make yeah. sure you have on that hat and that yep. suit and those gloves and keep your cell phone on you in case you need to. Do and it. have some Benadryl some nearby. Help. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Right. Well, you talked about stings. And one of the things that people think is that bees can, honeybees can sting repeatedly, mm-hmm. but they can't. Not really. I mean, I have been stung quickly, kind of barely by a honeybee. Barely. But the, the barb stinger didn't stick in my skin, okay. so right. she just kind of flew right. off. And But it did kind of hurt mm-hmm. and turn a little red. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can sting other insects where it doesn't get, the barb doesn't get so stung. So they can sting other insects stung. repeatedly. Many insects they can because, right. the yeah, it's our skin and mm-hmm. the barb stinger mm-hmm. that causes the stinger to get stuck. And then when the bee tries to pull it out, they disembowel. <laughs> Their innards come out, I think is what yeah, you're But yeah, uh, when they, when they uh, actually go to fly away with the stinger stuck, man, everything comes, comes out. Comes out. And yeah. they leave a gaping wound right. in their abdomen, right. so they die right. within an hour. Right, yeah. so the honeybee really can only sting you once. That's right. But now there's other ones that can sting you repeatedly, oh, like yeah. bumblebees. Yeah. I got attacked by a bumblebee one day when I was out mowing the yard. And that would not leave me alone. It I just, know. It just rolled oh, around with me, and I must have gotten 10 oh. stings in the back. I don't know. Same with yellow brain. jackets, or and same with a red wasp. If, you, if I make a red wasp mad, it makes it as life gold to sting me as many times as possible. It's terrible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, here's something interesting. Back to talking about food again, that bees 
are vegetarian. Now, but, I would assume bees are vegetarian because I just see bees go out, they go out to the flowers, they bring the nectar back. To me, that's vegetarian. Yeah. But that's a misconception. Well, I th yeah, you're right. And they gather pollen, right? So you mm -hmm. think pollen and nectar, so bees mm -hmm. are herbivores, right? But mm -hmm. they're not. They're omnivores. Wow. <laughs> so wh wh what are they eating well, that's meat? They're, no, they're not really meat eaters. Like a yellow jacket is a meat eater. Um, a yellow jacket will consume, like you put raw hamburger meat out there. A uh, yellow jacket will get that Road meat. Roadkill, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. But a honeybee, actually, studies have been done, and they've shown that all these microbes uh -huh. that sometimes exist in certain types of bee bread, this microactivity that's going on, okay. qualifies into the micro meat that aspect. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. And so the bees are consuming wow. the microbes, and that wow. puts them into the, the kind of the meat category. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, they're that omnivores. interesting. That really is interesting. Okay, yeah. now here's another one. One that I hear all the time is my bees died from wax moths. Oh, yeah, that's right. Can bees die from wax moths? No. Uh, I think what, I, what people are confused by is their colony, is, they go out to look at it, and it's just all but gone, right? And all uh -huh. they see is wax moth tearing up the, the comb and all the wax moth larvae going around and all the pupa that's uh, made these little notches in their wood so they conclude uh oh right. they died from wax moth but wax moth are the cleanup crew so example if you see some vultures on the road eating a dead animal the vultures didn't kill that animal they're just cleaning up what a car did. Yeah, exactly. So right. think of it that way with a beehive. Uh -huh. When a beehive dies, the cleanup crew, the wax moths come in, just starts cleaning up the wax. Right. You have to really know what it is that your bees died from. We all know that correlation doesn't equal causation. Mm. So just because, for instance, you That's see good. the farmer out in his field a yeah. week before mm -hmm. you go to your hive and you see a massive dead out, you can't assume, well, it was chemicals yeah, or right. the farmer did something. You exactly. know, I hear that a lot that's of right. times, you yeah. know, that just because something's correlating yeah. doesn't mean that's what caused the oh, issue no. yeah. that you really have to, you just really have to dig down and find out Absolutely. what is it that they yeah. died from. Yeah. You know, how do we find that out? Exactly. So wax moths can be controlled by keeping a real strong colony and a healthy mm -hmm. colony. Mm -hmm. And so once the colony starts getting weak, then the threat of anything, wax moth, small hay beetle, all these other things just capitalize on a weak colony mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, well, you know, we've actually gone through quite a few of them. I don't know mm -hmm. if you realize this, but here's the last one we're going to do today. That makes 10. And, and, and it makes 10. And I found this out because somebody that we were visiting with not too long ago said this. And I thought, oh, I didn't realize that people didn't know that. But the... the um, statement was made that they thought that all bees worked in mm. a hive all bees work in a hive mm -hmm. i guess kind of i mean if you if you really want to push the issue i could find that all types of bees like the drone the queen and the worker bee are doing activities mm -hmm. that might qualify mm -hmm. for work yeah and even the drone yes. what his purpose is i guess it, it's he work. could consider that work. <laughs> Most of us wouldn't consider that work. No, I guess not at all. <laughs> I guess maybe you could. Yeah. So what are you thinking? It's a lie that all bees work? Yeah, yeah. Because I think they actually thought that the drones actually went oh, out and did foraging oh, and those I kinds see. of things too. That so, every bee in there is out foraging. Oh, oh, including I Including the drones. Yeah. And not realizing that every bee, you mm -hmm. know, has a different purpose at a different age mm -hmm. right and that the foragers are actually the ones who are at the very tail end of their life that's correct yeah they're about mm -hmm. ready to die it's called mm -hmm. polyetheism where bees uh have different functions at different ages of their life and so they're all working all the time that's right and although drones don't do much other than mate with virgin queens that's actually quite a task for them if if you look at it they're actually flying out of a hive uh, a long way away it, to a yeah, drone true. congregation that's area true. and trying to mate with the virgin queen. And then if they are unsuccess unsuccessful, they uh, fly back and mm -hmm. try again another day. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of activity for them yeah, to actually it, to do. It is. I, yeah. I, I can see that. But as far as the actual work of the hive, as far as bringing in the, mm -hmm. 
the pollen or feeding the, mm -hmm. you know, the young larva or, or uh, taking care of the queen. Yeah. You know, he doesn't do any of those kinds of activities. I know. Hey, I got some bonus information. Yeah. If, if people have watched this far into the video, they're going to hear me say something now that's just like, oh my gosh, some people may not have made it this far, but if you were standing under a drone congregation area uh -huh. and there were several virgin queens that had flown into that drone congregation area and you were underneath of it, do you know you could hear the, the explosion of the drones mating with queens? And you could, you could <laughs> actually see drones falling on you. You could actually hear pop, 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 pop. All the drones, when they ejaculate, you would just hear pop, 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 all above you, Sherry, and you would be rained on by drones. See, more people are going to watch further into my videos. I'm not making this up. This is true. People have told me they can hear that. It's that powerful. Oh, wow. my gosh. I don't think I realized that lots of queens could end up in a drone congregation. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Time. I don't think I, I realized yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Not just, oh, yeah. It's not exclusive. No, not at all. It's not an exclusive club. No, no. All the queen, all the virgin queens will uh, find these places and show up. Just for those that may not may be new to beekeeping or, or not know much about bees. But once a, a drone does successfully mate with a virgin queen, he's done. So he right. just falls. Permanently. In, yeah, he just dies. So he yeah. just falls to his He's death. Done. He's done. He's done. Okay, in my last video, I promised in this video that I would have a giveaway. And I'm going to give away this five frame nuke that I made on the, my last video. That's it's nice. Yeah, it's really worked out really well. I really want to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so nice. You know, everybody needs a nuke. That's a one thing that people don't oh, realize they need them. They need them for swarms. They yep. need them for splits. They Absolutely. need them for queens. Just so many purposes. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so for your chance to win this five frame nuke that we made in the last video just leave a comment below and let us know of some kind of a myth that you've heard something about a bees that are that's alive that people keep passing around leave that comment below and then we'll randomly select one person that will win this you have to be in the lower 48 states so we can ship it to you you may be the winner and maybe i'll autograph it somewhere on the inside cool. and if you don't like the autographs you can paint over it <laughs> <laughs> now if you're starting beekeeping this year be sure and check out this video 1.5 million views how to start beekeeping i'll see you over there